Joining us now, reporter at ProPublica, Andrea Bernstein. She also covers Trump legal issues for NPR. Andrea, good to have you with us this morning. Let's start with the gag order. In your experience covering these matters, how rare is it and how strictly do you expect this will be enforced as most of us expect Donald Trump to violate it? Uh, rare, and I think it will be enforced because this judge means business. He has already cited and fined Mr. Trump for contempt, uh, so I think he means to do it. And uh, this is some, his clerk has been very involved with this case. I've seen her on numerous occasions sort of, uh, you know, reading documents, conferring with the judge, and this really goes to the heart of the judge's role. It, it is almost like attacking the judge. Yeah, clearly upset by mm -hmm. it and summoned them in at lunch uh, to tell them, delete that post, uh, knock it off. So let, let's talk beyond that and just you've covered Trump's business mm -hmm. dealings for many a year. Um, this does case really cuts the heart of who he is or at least who he represents himself to be. Um, give us a sense as to how you, what you've heard so far in the trial and what your expectations are going forward. And is there any chance that Donald Trump will actually take the stand? Oh, I think so, because the attorney general can, can call him. Now, he doesn't have to testify. He can right, take, take the fifth, fifth. But because it's a civil case, that can be used against him. So he can also testify in his own defense if he chooses to. But that could open up potentially him to be asked about anything. Mar-a-Lago, January 6th. Does he have other patterns of fraudulent behavior uh, to raise the previous criminal trial of his company, upcoming cases? So it's a real risk for him. And, you know, I think what we see is this sort of like parallel universe, you know, Donald Trump running by scrums of you know, cameras shouting things, sort of having an almost kind of designed chaos. And then in the courtroom, excruciating detail, spreadsheets, you know, what was this number? What was that number? Where did it come from? But what the attorney general is trying to do is establish this pattern of an organized conspiracy at the Trump organization to fudge their numbers. The, on fr on a Monday, when they gave the opening statements, they were showing how when Trump was caught lying about the size of his triplex. They didn't want their balance statement to go down, so they sort of scrambled to pump up other numbers, 40 Wall Street and one of the golf courses, to make the numbers all add up. And, and that is what this case is about. And of course, it's what Trump's been doing. And, you know, all of us in media, you know, it's sort of we try to fact check, we try to show where Trump is lying. But in a court, it's different. When you have a lie, it can have a $250 million consequence. So, Andrea, for purposes of, of people who view this from a distance, and I think that's a lot of Americans, most Americans, this is sort of a two-part trial, is it not? One part has already been decided, and what's being talked about and discussed right now is basically bank fraud and a couple of other things. And it's basically, I think, from, from my viewpoint, it's Donald Trump saying, you know, and his lawyers saying, no, no, the banks had a disclaimer. They, you just read it. Right. Sure. Well, and the judge already said in his ruling in which he found the Trump defendants, Donald, Eric, and Don Jr., plus the company, the judge found them to have lied repeatedly about their real estate value. So what's up for issue now is did they have a conspiracy? Did they lie to insurance companies? But in the previous ruling, the judge already said, well, it doesn't matter under New York law whether the bank suffered. You cannot repeatedly lie under New York business law. And so Trump is facing that. And, you know, one of the interesting things on Monday during the opening statements is his lawyers were sort of reaching, well, how do we defend this? And one of the defenses mm -hmm. was, this is real estate and you can value it however you want because you can always find a buyer. But that is exactly what Donald Trump and the other defendants are in trouble for, is sort of pulling values out of a hat and saying, well, we could theoretically get this. You actually cannot do that under New York law. <laughs> Claire McCaskill, uh, you can take it to the panel. I'd also love your legal take on this and also how you think this might be impacting Trump's businesses today, because it just appears he's especially enraged at this specific trial uh, of many. Well, I think this latest episode just shows how shook Trump is. Mm -hmm. um, this is cutting to the very core of his rationale for existence. And that has always been about lying about how successful he is and lying about the value of his businesses. And his self-worth is so tied up in this thing that this has really, I think, more so than anything else, probably even more so than some of the criminal indictments because he's living in la-la land. Um, and, and I just got to get this in as a point of personal privilege. 
the notion i mean i can't i can't decide whether to laugh or cry the notion yeah. that chuck schumer would be carrying on with someone if you knew chuck and iris like i know chuck and iris and their two right. daughters and their daughter's families there is not a more close-knit family in america iris is his north star his best friend his confidant and frankly she's smarter than he is so this notion that somehow it, it is just beyond laughable. And the fact that he would do that shows yeah. how scared he is to his very core that it's all coming out in the wash. And this judge is not going to play games. He's got an incredible reputation for being exacting and fair and thorough. And he's not going to put up with this. Yeah, Andrea, I would um, just add to Claire's analysis a question to you because I, I do think this pokes at everything he's about and for people who've been covering Donald Trump, for people who've been frustrated that there are Trump followers who don't see what's right in front of them in terms of him being a liar, a cheat, a fraud, admitting to taking classified documents, saying he had an affair with a porn star and paid her off and whatever else he's already put out there and take dirt on a political rival from a foreign leader. And you could go down, I could go the next four hours on things he has openly said that are beyond reproach and, and openly done, admitted to doing, that are beyond reproach. Um, so I guess there's a certain whatever that people get at him being exposed. But I think this might hurt his bottom line and oh, well, take yes. away his ability to take like and I'm, I'm wondering what the impact right now is on his businesses, because I'm thinking anybody who is doing business in any way with the Trump organization probably is thinking twice about having everything that they're doing with the Trump organization possibly exposed in court. Well, I think that is true, and that is something that, you know, I'd certainly heard from businesses, say, right after January 6th. But I think what we've seen since Trump was president yeah. is people who don't care, like Saudi Arabia, uh, sort of starting mm -hmm. to do business with Mr. Trump. And, you know, that's what, what walks mm -hmm. into this situation. But one of the things that was so striking to me is I can't believe how much time he spent in court. But that really is a signal of how yeah. meaningful this is to him and, and to his images, sort of, you know, I mean, one of his lawyers said he's New York's most successful real estate agent, a real estate developer. Yeah. Not true, but that is what is uh, at issue here and what he's trying to hang on to. I, I think he's there for a lot of reasons. There are a lot of different things that he does not want coming out in court that just might come out in court. Reporter at ProPublica, Andrea Bernstein, thank you so much for your reporting. For more of Andrea's reporting, listen to our new three-part podcast entitled, We Don't Talk About Leonard. We appreciate your being on this morning.